Adam and Eve, was it many things they did wrong or was it and what was that one thing over? Appetite. And in appetite, what area did Christ have to become victorious first? In appetite. And we are told if we overcome appetite, we overcome what? Every other sin. So let me ask you a question. Is this message important? Absolutely. Okay. In 1 Peter 5, 2, we don't have to go there. But in 1 Peter 5, 2, we are told to have a ready mind. That word ready means to be sober. Did you know that we can eat to a point where we can cause drunkenness to the brain? Did you know that if you mix all these combinations, according to the spirit of prophecy, we're not supposed to have anything more than three or four items on our plates. If we have more than that, she says it's war in the stomach, and then it's war in the mind. So God is calling his people to cleanse the filthiness of the flesh. He's asking us to go up higher and higher. And it's a serious, serious message. People think that they can put the health message aside and have all the other truths. You can't, you can't, okay, we teach the three angels' messages, right? What's the third angel's message? Fear God and give glory to Him. How do we give glory to God? Whatsoever we eat or drink or whatsoever we do, do all to the glory of God. So eating and drinking is part of the third angel's message. Uh, excuse me, part of the first angel's message. But it's the whole three angel's messages we're supposed to be teaching. It's part of the first angel's message. But you can't get to the third without the first and the second. Thank you for the clarification. I meant to say first, I kept saying third. Let's go back to Romans 12, 2. And I'll read that first. Or actually Romans 12, 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, tells us, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a what? Living a living sacrifice. Now let me ask you a question. I just lost my place. Okay, here it is. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 3, verse 1. Before we read it, can anyone answer me? When they presented their sacrifice, what was the requirement in order to present a sacrifice? No blemish. No blemish. Let's read that. Leviticus chapter 3, verse 1. I'll read this again. Uh, read this verse. And if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. Does that word blemish ring a bell? Let's go to Daniel chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. And I'll read these verses for the sake of time. It says, And the king spake unto Ashkenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Children in whom was what? No blemish. No blemish. Now, who raised Daniel and his friends? Were they homeschooled? Yeah. That's a whole other subject. But homeschooling is so important, especially in today, because if you send your kids in the public school, guess what food they're going to be given? Yes. And if you send them a sack lunch, they're going to be made fun of. So, homeschool your children. That's a whole other subject. Absolutely. So God wants us sober in our minds. Now Daniel, what happened after that? We see in Daniel chapter, I believe it's 3. What happened to Daniel's friends? Is it chapter 3? The furnace? Yes. The image? Is that Daniel chapter 3, right? Yes. What was erected? An image. an image. Do we have an image erected now? Absolutely. Is there a parallel between Daniel and Revelation? So Daniel's diet was a certain way to prepare him. We are told through I said it prepared him for what was coming. What should our diet be like? If our diet is not according to 
what we teach as a people, we will not refuse the mark of the beast. Do not kid yourself. It will not happen. It's very important. Now, here's some facts about the mind. We are told that nine-tenths of disease start right here. And remember, this and this is connected. Just a few facts about the mind. Most Alzheimer's and mental diseases come from a lack of iodine. Good information, huh? Lack of iodine. What's a good food source for iodine? Salt. Yeah. Salt. Okay, now here's the thing. I have a problem with kelp today, and I'll explain to you why. What herb did God tell us to eat? The herb of the field or the herb of the sea? The field. The reason why I have a problem with kelp today is because what is being dumped in the ocean? What's the number one that's being dumped in the ocean? Mercury. Mercury, right? I want to eat the stuff God told me to eat. Now, I'm not knocking people. I've done the kelp. I've done the seaweed. But as I'm studying more, I don't see anywhere where God told us to eat the herb of the sea. She said, in the fruits, vegetables, nuts, and grains contain all the elements needed to make good blood. That would include the seeds. If we are lacking iodine, it's because we are not eating the foods that we need to eat. And she does also talk about salt. The Bible says salt is good. We did a health nugget on that as well. What'd you say? What? Iodine salt. Oh, yes. But table salt, we have to be careful because they've take, taken all the minerals out of it. You have only the sodium, the chloride, and the iodine. But like your real salt and your Celtic salt, is that the correct name, Celtic? Celtic salt? Those have like 80 plus minerals. And you have the iodine in there. So I know people are taking the seaweed, but I don't teach it. Because I believe what the prophet of the Lord says. In the fruits, the vegetables, the nuts and grains, she doesn't say seaweed. And I'm not knocking anybody. But we have to teach the message in such a simple way. First of all, does the seaweed contain mercury? If the fish have it, then I would think the seaweed has it. So we have to be careful what we're giving to people. Now people say, well, fruits and vegetables, yes, but I need fruits and vegetables to survive. I don't need seaweed to survive. I don't need meat to survive. Now I'm not knocking those who use it, but I'm learning to come away from it and go back to what the prophet of the Lord is telling us. Is that understandable? Amen. Amen. Because we read last night that it was the green herb of the field that God added because of sin when we sweat. I don't read anywhere where he said he went to the ocean and got the seaweed out. I don't see Jesus doing it in the, in the New Testament. I don't see it anywhere. And if we cannot find it in the Bible, it's not applicable for us. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord, our God. But the things revealed belong to us. Where is it revealed in Scripture that we need to eat seaweed? Now, once again, I'm not knocking anyone. But we have to go back to the original, the way it was in the beginning. And I don't see that included there. Now, your barley greens, like barley life is excellent. It's got all these, but these are natural foods. These are different things that they've taken from the earth, dried them out, and ground them up and put in a powder. There's nothing wrong with that because that's 100% food. But like I said last time, when they give you this little peel and they tell you there's 80 products in there, you got to be careful of that because they've extracted everything and then you don't have your facilitators to counterbalance. Is that understandable? Okay. So when we read Romans 12 verse 1, present your bodies a living sacrifice, it's referring to health. God wants his people not with diseased blood, but with healthy blood. And how long did we learn it can take if we apply everything? What's the maximum she said it would take? One to two months. Is that long? Not at all. In order to have health, we need to eat like a king or queen for breakfast. Do you know breakfast is to be the heartiest meal of the day? Yes. That doesn't mean you have to have your vegetables in the morning. 
I've heard some people say you must eat your vegetables in the morning and eat your fruit in the afternoon. Because there are quotes, I have to go back and read them. Once again, the message was progressive. And I've seen Sister White, she's eating her bread and her fruit and stuff, but an abundance in the morning. And then she'll have like a light meal, some greens, and maybe a piece of bread and very light compared to what she had in the morning. She'll say, oh, they ate in abundance, they had all this fruit spread out, and, and the bread, and other and grains, and so, but the breakfast, you should eat like a king or a queen. Amen. You should eat like a prince or princess for lunch, and if possible, pass on the evening meal. Now, we are told that two meals are better than three. But there are some people who do hard work, hard labor, they need that third meal. Okay? You're fasting from the second meal all the way to breakfast. That's why you have the word breakfast, break the fast. Now, if you find yourself eating at 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock, you did not eat breakfast. You did not break the fast. We should have our breakfast early in the morning. Because what happens is your blood sugar levels can start to get low, you can start to get headaches, you can get irritable. Now if you're doing it to fast, that's a different reason. That one or two meal. But if you were not set out to do it, you did not consecrate that meal to the Lord and say, I'm going to fast, then things can happen in your body. Especially if you have medical conditions like diabetes or something. And there's something called hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. And for a lot of people, that's a precursor and a sign that you can become diabetic. Not in all cases, but in many cases. Okay. The vegetarian lifestyle, we talked about present your body as a living sacrifice. The vegetarian lifestyle allows you to present your body a living sacrifice to God. Why is that? Because now you're denying yourself the things you love and you are taking up the things that the Savior gave to us at the beginning. Remember we talked about the garden. Here's the garden. I'll put a tree. Excuse my tree. <laughs> and then we went this way. And then we went the cross. And now we're going back to the what? We're going back to the garden. This is where the Lord wants to take us. It's back here. So we're denying those things. The diet got progressively worse, right? As they left the garden, it got progressively worse. And then from the cross, God is trying to take it back to the way it originally was, in his people. We, we learned last night there has to be a restitution of how many things? All things. And Prophets and Kings says in page 678 that there is to be, um, there will be a restitution of every divine, every divine institution will be restored. That's what she said. Okay, so health is spiritual. We are told every member of the church should take hold of the medical missionary work. Testimonies, volume 7, page 62, paragraph 1. Were you guys familiar with that? When God's children humble themselves before Him and deny themselves that which they're used to, God will bring more people into His churches. Testimonies, volume 7, page 62, paragraph 1. I want to read something to you. And then we're going to end on this note. I have a lot more to cover, but we don't have the time. We are told, let me find the road. Here it is. The Church and Health Reform. Testimonies for the Church. 